Hey everyone, my name is Coral, and it seems to me that over the past five years, or even more so, these RGB light bars have become all the rage. Um, it went from being sort of LED replacements for the Kino flow banks, but now they are sort of freestanding, and people use them for all kinds of creative shoots. And there are tons of different options you can pick from. There are high-end options from like Corsair Science, and it goes all the way down to the low end, where you can buy some stuff for AliExpress for next to nothing. However, I happen to have built these by accident for a different project. I built a sort of, you know, uh, one meter, even more than that, one meter square RGB LED cube as my first electronics project, where I learned a lot about like sort of how to get into engineering and how to do 3D printing, etc. The way these looks is that they have a cheap RGB LED that is taped to a metal or an aluminum L-shaped bar, right? So you have this APA 102, uh, 72 LEDs per meter LED strip that is sort of taped down to this. I put these in a acrylic tube in which I managed to somehow fit a sun film that you're actually supposed to put on a uh, window to sort of block sun out. So what I was thinking of doing today is like, I'm going to take this unfinished tube. You can see this is one of the prototypes because I made it with packing tape <laughs> and turn into some sort of uh, um, light bar that I can have beside me. As I've sort of set this studio up, it would be nice to have some sort of um, lighting here behind me because it's very dark and I think it will look really nice. So I'm going to do that. But in order for us to sort of go ahead and do this, I need to first design and print some components. So we're going to start in that direction. And then when we printed them, we can get back to assembling it. I opened the old files from when I made this back in 2018, but it turns out that like I've developed so many skills over the past years. So it was almost a throwaway at that point. It was easier to just restart from scratch, take the measurements just for the, the tolerances and just start over, right? And also starting over allowed me to rethink a bit how to fit the ship inside instead of hanging the ship outside. So yeah, it turned out much better and it's fun to see how much I've learned over the years. So this is the passive end that is just a stop. And this is the active end where we put the uh, pixel place. So if we look underneath here, you have the ship that powers it with the Wi-Fi DSP. And so I left some space for cabling. And then I modeled this cover that slides on and sort of locks in place. So you don't have to screw just to like attach the cover. And with the design done, the only thing that was left remaining to do was print it on the printer. Simple as that. Okay, so after some design work and uh, some uh, non-stop printing from my nice printer, we managed to print these parts and some more parts, but I'll show you these first. So as I showed you in the uh, 3D uh, rendering, we have this sort of holder that's supposed to hold the bar here. Um, I made this cover, right, that slides in right behind here. And let's see if this works. Like a glove, fits perfectly. So this is going to be the end thing. So you can think of them sitting like this against each other with this big tube in the uh, middle with the LED, right? However, as you can imagine, these are going to, to roll around back and forth, which won't be a good experience. So in order to solve this, I printed these sort of tripods in which you can sit in. So the idea is that you will put this end in a tripod and then put this lid on and screw it together and then equal on the other side, right? And that way, this can stand on the table and you can adjust it in whatever angle you want these to be in. So I think that should be a, a pretty nice solution. So at this point, we just might have to go ahead and solder these. So let me put these away. We don't need these for now. For electronics, I am going to use the uh, Pixel Blaze. I have an old Pixel Blaze running out. Pixel Blaze is a project by Ben Heck, and I think he's like a Burning Man person that makes a lot of these cheap ESP32 controllers where he runs his Pixel Blaze software. You can get them at electromage.com. I've used these now for four or five years, sometimes for full projects and sometimes just for experimenting and sort of trying things out until I port it to my own code. Uh, for this project particularly, because it's gonna be a standalone lamp, I think this is the perfect controller because it's self-contained, it has the logic converters, it has a Wi-Fi stack, all of it is just built for me, so I don't have to deal with the code. So yeah, this is an old Pixel Blaze. He now sells them with the ESP32 and in a smaller version that's like much, much more efficient. But this is what I had lying around, so we'll start there. 
Basically all we need to do is connect this to the power and then the power to the power and the signal to the board and we should be done. But doing that in a consistent manner is the hard part. So if we start by piping these wires through here, I'm gonna have to cut these I'm afraid. But that's fine, I anticipated this, believe it or not. As you understand, the barrier connector goes through this hole here, which I think should go in. I haven't actually tried this 3D printed part yet. Maybe I should have done that before starting recording, but nothing a bit of a tool can solve, to be honest. Let's thread that in quickly. Well, the good news is that this likely won't unthread itself by mistake, given how much friction I'm applying to this. Also damage, but whatever. This will probably sit there for a substantial amount of time, so we don't have to really have to worry about that. You know, I could go ahead and resolder the actual LED, but if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I am sort of done with soldering RGB LED. I feel uh, completely done with that in my life. It's, um, it's an activity which, of which I have spent enough time where I do not feel the need to do it anymore, and thus I will not do it anymore. So. For that simple reason, we're going to reuse the one that exists and make it even harder for ourselves by not doing it the right way. But who cares, I guess. This iron is supposed to have a automatic sensor which like turns it off in an activity and when you take up the tip, there's a small ball in here that's supposed to know that you want to start iron. That never worked for me, so you have to turn it on off all the time. And when you forget, you're like, why isn't it soldering? So yeah, you get used to that after a while. Okay, we have power connected to this magical board. Now we just need to connect the uh, signal wires that I so happily have laying around here. And you know, everyone does this differently, but for me, yellow is clock and green is data. One thing I found out during my insanity soldering this summer is actually the, I guess a beginner's mistake that I made many times is that I thought having more of the exposed wire would make it easier to solder. I would disagree with that now and I actually think that the more exposed wire you have, the harder it is to get a good solder. So I would recommend if you're struggling doing soldering, which I did, to just cut the wire shorter and testing. So what we'll do is we'll plug <coughs> the barrel yet connector into this. Hopefully, boom. I'm gonna plug this in here and we'll know immediately if it works or not. Did it work? It should work. Yay! We have lights. So, there you see. <laughs> the thing actually ended up working out. Believe it or not, I'm a bit surprised by it. So all that's left now is actually just like shug this into the, the tube and then we should be able to get go from this. There we go. It's not on the brightest setting right now, but you get the gist. And if I turn around, you can see it's light from all directions. Of course, it's a bit more light on the top, but you know, <laughs> we have a light bar, the, the cheapest, most homemade DIY, I never said that word before, light bar at my extremely small workbench here in the San Francisco. So with these stands, I'm going to have to apply some friction tape. You can also see if you're really keen-eyed, you can see that I actually had some bed adhesion problems with my old Prusa here, because I was printing old PLA in a cold room. So <laughs> this one is actually not straight, but it doesn't really matter for use case. So. Who cares? And then apply this to the iFixit tool, if you've ever seen this. I am not sponsored by these guys, but I'm telling you, like, this is my favorite tool set. Mostly because it's high quality enough. You know, if you spend like $200 on a tool set, you probably get better stuff. But for what I do, this is just the perfect balance of cheap, but reliable. Okay, now we have some ability to adjust this. Okay, so let's just put this up and adjust it and plug it in and see, see how that feels for now. I was thinking of putting it right here. Okay, let's plug that one in.
You know, there's a great many things you could improve about this design and this light bar, but for a zero amount of new dollars spent, I'm actually pretty happy with the outcome. What we have here is a functional, nice looking bar that I'll probably set to more solid gradient instead of this um, rainbow monstrosity. But yeah, that's it for now. Hope you come back for the next video, whatever that turns out being. Thank you.